Hello, everyone. My name is Brendan Stead. I work for uh, Sound United. I've been working in um, audio for since about 1994. My background is I have a degree in physics. I um, grew up with a building grandfather audiophile dude, so I made speakers as a teenager, and it took me a while to figure out that I could actually make money doing that. <clears throat> so I wanted to start out and just talk about one little thing that happened to me a couple of years ago. I was messing with my iPhone during a conference call, and for some reason I decided to select salutation on my wife's contact. Uh, and every night when I drive home, the first thing I do is I call my wife um, and see how she's doing. So I jump in my truck and I go uh, call Barbara Stead, um, and it calls Barbara Stead every day, except this day it didn't. I'm like, what happened? And then I thought, wow. And then I said, call Mrs. Barbara Stead, and it called my wife. And because I had put that salutation in, it uh, didn't recognize it. So that's not conversational at all, right? I should be able to get in the car. Some, some smart cloud somewhere should know that when I get in my car, every day I call my wife around the same time at the same geographic location. And it should ask me if I want to call my wife. Or I should just be able to say, call Barb, or call my wife, or call the love of my life, right? It can be anything that you want to say. It shouldn't just be like a scripted syntax that is so defined that if anything changes, it breaks. So that's kind of where we want to go. Now, some of the follow-on speakers will talk more about things like that. I'm going to take a very infrastructure, kind of a hardware, edge computing, cloud computing approach to how, how we've done this in our company. So Sound United is not a consumer-facing brand. Um, it is a collection of brands that you may know. And we have a mission of bringing joy to the world through sound. Joy is cool, sound is awesome, and we're a global company. Here are some of the products that we make. Uh, so our brands, you can see them across the bottom. These are legendary audio brands. Denon was established 110 years ago. Think about that, 110-year-old company. Marantz was founded in Bronx in 1953. Uh, Definitive over there was founded um, in Baltimore about 70 years ago. So these are old legacy brands. So if you look at the audio business in general, um, it gets changes in the audio business happen from three things. First of all, it's the content. Like, what's the format of the content? The second thing is, how do you control the devices? And the third uh, is physical interfaces. So for example, the first product that Denon made was a gramophone on the left 110 years ago. So thank God we learned how to make records and cassette players and CDs to stay relevant. Now we're doing stuff all the way in the far right, where we have an audio video receiver today that you can say, Alexa, play Bob Marley in the living room, and then follow up and say, Siri, turn the volume to 10. And then you can say, uh, hey, Google, take the next track, right? So we are currently interoperating with all three of the major North American uh, voice engines today. Um, so we talk about IoT and voice together. I know this is a, specifically a voice topic, but there, you need so much IoT infrastructure to be able to make it work. And if you look back at the IoT era, um, it really started with Dolby kicking the door open to make us work on software, then file sharing that happened, um, then Bluetooth, smart apps, streaming, and voice. So many, many uh, cool things. So this is uh, Sound United's entry uh, into uh, the Internet of Things thing. So in 2014, we introduced this product line called Heos. And the way it worked is you use smart controllers we would basically hit our Heos cloud with a single API, and that cloud would then be able to go and browse all of these other music services, and it would return um, playback information. So it would be you know, artist level, URI stuff. And then that would get sent back down to the phone, and the phone would send it over into our AV receiver or one of our powered speakers, and then that speaker would go directly to that website with the URI and download that stream. So there's two separate clouds that are working. But in this case, the clouds aren't connected to each other. Uh, they're independent. The next thing that we did is we implemented um, a digital twin of the system state machine in the cloud. So the state machine is what that specific product is doing. Like, is it on? What's the volume level? What input has been selected? What's it doing, right? So we have that in our Heos cloud, and any changes that are made in the cloud state machine or the product state machine are duplicated because they're twins. So what that did for us is it allowed third-party clouds 
to tell our products exactly what to do through an API interface. So we have products today where you can have a first party voice device like a, a Google or an Alexa or an uh, Apple, even an Apple iPhone, and you could say, play Bob Marley in the living room. Now what happens is that goes up into the voice cloud, the, the NLU interprets the intent, figures out, oh, that's Brendan's AVR in his living room, it sends it over to the cloud, says, hey, tell Brendan's AVR to wake up, um, configure yourself this way, and here's your ear, we go pull down that stream. So this is what's working today in all of our products. We launched that last fall. So this is an API cloud-based implementation of, of voice control that we've done. <clears throat> what we've also done is um, full stack integration. So there's a product called the Polk Command Bar. Uh, it has basically what looks like a dot built into its head. We launched it last year. And it's essentially a, um, uh, it acts just like a, an Alexa product. We also have for Google um, a product called the Polk Assist. And it acts just exactly like it's a Polk. So it's just a single um, voice engine dedicated product. What we aspire to do is to do things in parallel at a full stack level as well. That's not something that we've been able uh, to do yet. We think that um, technically it's fairly straightforward, but what we want to be able to do is have people have give the consumer choice as to what voice engine they use. Part of what we do is we don't make products that force you to use our app. Or you can use Spotify, you can use Apple Music, you can use Amazon Music, whatever. We, we try to provide ultimate choice. So for the future, uh, th these are the things that we've talked about a lot, um, is making things multimodal. So voice is great when you know what to say. But if you don't know what you're looking for, it's very difficult to drive a search from voice. Things like lists and thumbnails, whether you can scroll through, or it's much better, it's an interactive experience. But you also don't want to have to do everything at the same time, right? So you could, I should be able to scroll through a list of icons and say, play this, hit the icon in the living room, or just play this, and it should just happen. So these multimodal interfaces where you have a combination of button presses, remote presses, scrolling, swiping, and voice, is the next things that we want to do. The other thing that I think you guys should think about is your product should be touch sensitive and proximity aware. Uh, so this is, goes back to my truck story. Like the truck should know that I'm getting in the truck at work and it should behave like I always behave because we live our life in patterns. And smart AI can figure out what those patterns are and the system should be guessing at what I want. And what that does is it lowers the pressure on the vocabulary because it's much more context centered. So you should know that I'm in the room standing next to the speaker, and if I say, play Bob Marley, I shouldn't have to say, play Bob Marley in the living room. Right? It should know I'm standing right there. I probably want to hear it in that location. And then I think there's great opportunities to build intents based on your consumer's use cases. So for us, we're an audio company. What people do is they browse content. So we don't have the right to go and compete with a Google or an Apple or an Amazon for commerce and music playback and general inquiries. But we may be able to have a role where we can get consumers to play music easily and have a very broad syntax for playing music in particular. So if it assumes that I'm talking about browsing music libraries, we can narrow the number of use cases that we're trying to support, thereby making our hit rates higher. And the last thing I wanted to talk through a little bit is in these new technologies, it's really interesting trying to get involved with the big tech majors. Um, so often the tech majors struggle early on when there's a new technology. Um, a lot of times um, there's no one that believes them. Like when the, uh, Amazon was working on Alexa, they hadn't had success yet, so no one was supporting them. And they were very open. And fortunately, our CEO went to business school with uh, Dave Limp, who runs the voice team there. So we committed to doing the soundbar like two and a half years before it was a success. So there are times when tech majors are asking to do things that seem crazy, but that's the easiest time to work with them because that's when you'll get the support because you have some bargaining chips. Oftentimes, they're also very selective. Like Apple does this a lot where they'll pick one or two launch partners by category. And if you ever get in that opportunity, the goodwill that you get from supporting them when they haven't won yet is worth the risk. So take bets whenever you get these opportunities. Be bold. Make your companies be bold and take these bets. And, you know, visit often and make proposals. People think these, these huge companies 
are good at everything and they're not. There's opportunities for all of us to come forward and bring things to the game. And they get skin in the game from them through marketing investments or whatever, and then execute it. That's it, guys. Thanks.